Jashi. From the moment you were born, Dash, all you wanted was to get big. <laughs> big enough to leave your boring baby bed and see the world outside. You were so little. Growing big would take time. But you weren't the most patient tiger. No, you wanted to dash. You'd get so grumpy. Because you couldn't see yet. But that was the first thing to change. Dash's eyes are just starting to open. Pretty soon we're gonna see those baby blues. As soon as you could see, you wanted to walk. <laughs> but you had trouble even standing. What are you doing? <laughs> are you trying to roll over? I see you. Then, one day, finally, your first steps. Look it! You're walking! <laughs> <laughs> now that you could walk and see, over here, Dash. You thought you were ready to go and finally explore the world. But it wasn't time yet. Five weeks had passed, and you'd gotten much bigger. But you were still a baby. You needed to grow a bit more. But you didn't believe us. You kept trying to show us all the things you could do. How high you could climb. Ooh, careful that you were never scared. That you could pounce on anything, even a bed, to convince us you were big enough. Then, after two months of waiting, you'd gotten so big. You were almost there. It's been two and a half months. Let's see. Are you ready to brave the world outside? And Mr. Dash just received outdoor access today. You were a little nervous, but that didn't stop you. This was what you'd been waiting for. Oh, that's a big climb, Mr. Dash. You finally reached your tiger dreams. Now you just have to grow the rest of the way. This is Mila, a cat who loves being part of the pack. <laughs> she lives with all of these dogs and people. Oh, and also this dog and this one. Sometimes this little cat can feel small and lost, but not when she's with her best friend, Mimi. They help each other remember to be brave because before she met Mimi, Mila didn't feel very fearless. She was all alone when Desi and Chantal found her in the bushes. They heard a meow and realized a little kitten was stuck in there. Oh, nine. The water was really deep, but Chantal held Mila close and walked slowly back to safety. Mila was scared and couldn't stop meowing. They needed to take her home right away, but there was one problem. Their big dogs at home might not be careful with a tiny kitten. So they made one room a no-dog zone. Every day they fed her and tried to make her feel safe. But she still cried all the time. What was wrong? And then one day, the dogs snuck into her room. Desi and Chantal were worried she'd be scared of the giant dog. But she wasn't. 
Instead, she seemed happy to have a friend. And she stopped crying. The next day, Desi and Chantal saw this. This is incredible. The dogs were gentle with her. But they didn't need to be. She was ready to play rough. Mila loved her big new family, but she still didn't know where she fit in. She didn't have a best friend yet. But it wouldn't be long. Desi and Chantal were at a restaurant when they met Mimi. Her foot was hurt and she needed a home. So they brought her back with them. They didn't know if she'd like living with so many dogs and a tiny cat. And they wondered if Mila would get nervous around a new dog in the house. What they never guessed is that Mila thought Mimi would make a great mom. She kept trying to nurse. Luckily, Mimi didn't mind. She loved having someone trust her with their whole heart. Her legs became Mila's favorite place to sleep. And her head became Mila's favorite place to attack. Oh my gosh, Mila, you're gonna get in trouble. Now, when new rescued animals join the family, Mila's the one sneaking in, checking to make sure they're safe, and being their new mom. Mila finally knows exactly where she belongs. Because sometimes, you don't go looking for family. Family finds you. When Napa came to this wide open animal rescue, his whole world changed. Here, Napa could be himself. Curious and floppy bear. For 12 years, Napa's life was different. He was born at a small zoo, then worked in a circus, where he had to perform tricks every day and sleep in a small cage at night. Napa wasn't happy, but he never gave up hope. And one day, his luck changed. A team of rescuers heard about Napa, and they broke open his cage and drove him to his new life. Because Napa had never lived on his own, he couldn't just be released into the wild. So the rescuers brought him to his short-term home, a special zoo. Napa really liked it. He was the king of the zoo. He could eat fruit while swimming. But Napa didn't stay long because his rescuers were working on a plan to bring Napa to nature. Soon, a team of 30 rescuers arrived and drove the bear to the top of a beautiful mountain the entire place was just for bears, just like Napa. But Napa couldn't go outside yet. The rescuers had to make sure he was ready. So they set up an indoor space with things for him to practice. The rescuers had no idea how he'd react, but Napa let loose. He loved practicing being an outdoor bear. To Napa, it was the best place he'd ever lived.
He even got his teeth fixed. But it was about to get even better. The rescuers decided it was time to try releasing Napa outside. It was a moment Napa had been waiting for his entire life. And Napa did it just right. He jumped in every pond, looked for his own food, and rubbed his bare butt in the snow for the very first time. Napa was home. In his whole life, he had never lived free and outside before. He was so happy. And when the rescuers brought Amelia and Maimo to live with him, his bare heart nearly overflowed. Now all three are as close as family. They spend every day at the top of the most beautiful mountain. In a place just for them. Exactly how a bear's life should be. The first time Bixby the beaver met Harry the otter. What do you think, Big? It didn't go great. They were actually pretty scared of each other. In the wild, otters and beavers meet all the time. But Bixby and Harry both live in an animal sanctuary. Harry just arrived. This is your new home. But Bixby's been here for a while. Hi. When Bixby was just a baby beaver, his den was destroyed by accident. Some people found Bixby all alone and brought him to the sanctuary. From that moment on, Bixby loved humans. He's keeping up. He'd make little beaver noises until they gave him treats. At the sanctuary, Bixby had a brand new den to call his own. That no one else was allowed in, thank you very much. And a whole pond, all to himself. Well, he had to share with these turtles, but they didn't really say much. He got tons of attention from his humans, and life was good. There was just one little problem. Bixby was alone with only turtles to keep him company. But then, Harry arrived. Harry needed a little more help than Bixby. His arms and legs didn't grow how they were supposed to, so he couldn't walk or run or swim. Harry could only roll and roll. The people at the sanctuary helped his arms get stronger, but they knew the best thing for Harry would be a friend who could encourage him. Could Bixby be that friend? Well, not at first. Bixby probably thought that Harry was just a very strange beaver. And Harry probably thought that Bixby was a really odd otter. They didn't think they had anything in common. Bixby went back to his den, where no one else is allowed, thank you very much. And Harry tried to make friends with the turtles, but they don't really say much. Harry and Bixby were still alone and were feeling lonely too. Until one day, they saw each other in the pond and realized they actually did have something in common. But that wasn't all. They both love begging for snacks. Oh, are you climbing up my leg like Bixby now? And chowing down in the sun. And messing with the pool skimmer. Harry showed Bixby his very best roles. And Bixby showed Harry how to build a dam. The more time they spent together, 
the better Harry felt. Soon, he could even run. Anything to keep up with his new best bud. They started to feel like more than just roommates. They felt like brothers. And then the best thing happened. Bixby started letting Harry join him in his den. Turns out there was someone else who was allowed in. Bixby's best animal friend, the turtles. Just kidding, it's Harry, of course. I feel like a Disney princess sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. Meet Julie. You might say she has a way with birds. But it wasn't always this way. One day, Julie noticed a blue jay on her deck who seemed to want to say hi. But what surprised her was that the next day, he was back. And the next day. And the next. Soon, Julie was spending every day with her new feathered friend. So she decided to give him a name, Stormy. Julie would sit very still so that Stormy wouldn't get scared. After a while, it seemed like Stormy was starting to trust her more and more. She knew that every morning she could open her door and her favorite bird would flutter out to see her. Good morning. There we go. Until winter came. Julie missed seeing her friend. But she didn't have to wait long. Because when spring returned, there Stormy was. And this time, he'd brought Walter. Walter couldn't have been friendlier. You're braver than Stormy. Soon, Julie's flock of friends began to grow. Lenny and Squiggy were two of the most playful chickadees in the world. They would come right up to her window. Can Julie come out and play? No matter what Julie was doing, Hi there. She always made time for her friends. Hi guys, hi there. And they loved her. All of Julie's new visitors made her heart full. Until one day, everything changed. Julie had to move. I had to say goodbye to Lenny and Squiggy today and Walter and feed them for the last time. When she got to her new home, she was nervous. She had worked so hard to get the birds to trust her once. Could she do it again? Hi. Every morning, Julie opened the door, but the birds all flew away. She was devastated. She missed Stormy and Walter and Lenny and Squiggy. But Julie wasn't going anywhere. She remembered how she made friends with Stormy. So she brought these new birds tasty treats too. And showed them respect by not getting too close. And after a lot of patience and a lot of peanuts, something amazing happened. Julie named her new pal Morty. And then came Juniper. And Jack and Winnie. And they introduced her to their baby. Julie will never forget her old friends. But she feels lucky to have a whole new group of amazing bird pals. Being a bird magnet may mean waking up really early and buying peanuts in bulk, but Julie wouldn't have it any other way. And neither would the birds. We'll help you get your spirit back, sea turtle. When we found you, you were pretty thin and a little quiet. We could tell you weren't feeling well at all. So we took you to our rescue center. One day, you'll crawl back to the ocean. But until then, we're gonna help you get your strength back. We know you love the water, but we need to keep you out of it for now. 
Swimming would tire you out too much. But we can't let you get dry. So we'll cover you in wet towels. How does it feel? Now that you're comfortable, we'll check you out and see what's wrong. First, we'll take your temperature, measure your shell, and listen to your body. Your shell is covered in algae and barnacles, and you haven't been drinking enough. No wonder you're too tired to swim. We have a special pool where you can slowly get used to the water again. If we can figure out how to get you there. This is a job for the whole team. Don't be nervous, they're being extra careful. Just a tiny bit of water for now. The best way to practice swimming again is little by little. Once you're good at coming up for air, we'll add more. Whoa, the fresh water is getting rid of all the algae and barnacles on your shell. And it tastes good too. Keep drinking. Let's try a little swimming. Do we look funny inside there? Every day, we'll add more water. You're looking so much more alert. She's glowing in the sunlight right now. Let's see if you're hungry. No question there. We love seeing your strength come back, which means it's time. You're ready to go home. We'll carry you again, but this time, we're going somewhere special. <laughs> time for your big moment. Can you go the rest of the way on your own? You got this. It's hard to say goodbye, but we're so happy to see you back home. With a little help from us, you're ready again for life in the wild. here. I gotta tell you something, and it might freak you out. The world is leaking. I've seen the evidence with my own eyes and with my own face. Everywhere I go, water's spraying out all over the place. Like here. Oh, 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 and here. Oh, and over here. And there's only one dog who can keep it in the ground. Nala. And Nala is me. <coughs> I'll stop these leaks and keep the world from flooding. Even if it means drinking every last leaky drop myself. How much water can it be? Like 300 bowls or something? Yeah, that sounds right. Let me tell you how this whole mess started. Mom and Dad and me were taking a walk. Everything was peachy. When all of a sudden, sploosh, goosh, water was exploding out of the ground. It was out of control. I tried plugging the holes with my paws, but every time I pounced on one geyser, another appeared. When we got home that night, I thought, that was pretty weird. But I didn't really get worried. Until the leaks began appearing all over the place. It was never-ending. <gasps> In my own yard? I don't think so. Where is all this water coming from, I wondered. Who could be responsible for this dastardly crime? So I began to do some investigating. You know, real detective work. And that's when I noticed that the leaks were connected to hoses, which were connected to houses, including, brace yourself, my own house. But 
that would mean someone was making these leaks on purpose. And that someone was... <gasps> my dad? I gotta tell you, I did not see that twist coming. But it was all so obvious now. Whenever I tried to warn dad about the leaks, he was like, Nala, that water is just for making the grass grow. Or, Nala, it's so cute when you play with the sprinklers. Sprinklers? Ha, huh, that's a cute word for something so devious. And you know what? I think my mom might be in on it too. Because now that I'm on to them, they don't even try to hide it from me. They just blast me with the hose. Or they put their sprinklers right out in the open. They even tried to convince me that this was a toy. Get it, Nana. Well, just wait. Eventually, I'll figure out how these doohickeys work and put an end to all this leaky nonsense. But just in case, I better get a message to the president. And I know just the person for the job, my friend, the mail carrier. I'm pretty sure she knows the president. Good morning. How's my best friend? Listen, my reliable letter-carrying friend. You work for the government, right? Can you inform the president that the world is leaking? And tell him to send plumbers. Lots of plumbers. That should do it. But until help arrives, I must remain vigilant. It is my duty, my joy, my purpose. Because if I don't, well, things could get pretty wet around here. Leak, leak, leak! Don't worry, Nala is here! <laughs> You're the toughest little squirrel we know, Rocky. Rocky was found all alone. What is it? And he's way too tiny. But we're here for you, Rocky. You can count on us. You're a curious little squirrel. But you're so tiny. We want to release you back home to the wild. But you're not feeling well enough yet. Let's get you some milk. That's what every growing baby squirrel drinks. There you go. Since you're so little, we have to feed you almost every hour. No, you want me to clean your face off first? He makes a mess. Hmm, Rocky, you're not really growing. You're still smaller than a tiny battery. What's wrong? We keep feeding you milk, but it doesn't seem to be working. Usually milk helps squirrels grow big, but you're so small. Wait a minute. Maybe this is the wrong kind of milk. You might be lactose intolerant. We'll get you a new special formula to try. Here you go, Rocky. I hope this works. Gotta get stronger to go back to the wild again. Sleepy squirrel, close your eyes. We'll check on you tomorrow. Hi, Rocky. You seem good this morning. But did you gain weight? Hey, a little bit. We can try other foods now. Big squirrel. Somebody's feeling good. But we'll need to test how strong you are before we're sure you're ready for the wild. The winner by knockout! the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky the Lactose Intolerant Red Squirrel! Are you ready, Rocky? It's a big day today. I think you're strong enough now to be on your own in the wild. 
you can start in this release house to get used to all the noises and animals outside. But we'll leave the door open so you can go when you're ready. Bye, Rocky! We'll miss you, you tough little squirrel. Your heart is in the trees. That's where you belong. You were alone, but somehow we found you. And figured out that you were sick. We're so glad we could help. And so glad you're feeling all better. In this house, one cute little kitten named Pickle is boss. But he wasn't always the boss. Before Pickle, Coda lived a nice, quiet life at home. She was a really happy dog. And then one day, she was in an accident and everything changed. Her legs were hurt and she had to learn how to walk again. Her mom, Brooke, was worried. Coda seemed so sad. Every day she practiced walking, but she didn't want to eat or play. It took a lot of work, but soon Coda could walk and run almost like she used to but she still didn't look happy. Nothing seemed to cheer her up. Would Coda be sad forever? Brooke had an idea. They went to Coda's favorite places together. Maybe that would cheer her up. Coda, what are you doing? But Coda still seemed sad. Then one day, Brooke saw a picture of a sweet little cat who needed a home. She wondered if he could help cheer Coda up. What is it? But they were about to find out that Pickle was a troublemaker. Oh my God. The only way the house was safe from this menace was when he was wrapped up like a kitten burrito. But even that couldn't stop him for long. Coda didn't know what to do with him. And then one day, Brooke found Coda outside by herself. She didn't understand. How did she get out? Brooke kept finding her again and again. What was going on? But then she spotted this. I can't believe it. Looks like this little escape artist has a new sidekick. From then on, they were so attached, it was hard to tell where one ended and the other began. Koda, I think you're laying on something. Now, when Pickle causes trouble, Coda joins in. And she brings Pickle to all her favorite places. Coda's happy again. And it's all because of a bow tie wearing, suitcase hiding, bed stealing best friend. Rescuers had never met someone like Kanisa before. She had bright blue eyes. And since they were more sensitive to the sun, Kanisa had to walk with her eyes closed, following people's voices. Good girl. But there was something else special about her. When the rescuers first found Kanisa, she had been stuck outside for a few days and she was hurt. 
When they needed to spray blue medicine on her wounds, Kinesa felt scared. But then her rescuers saw her do something completely unexpected. Even though Kanisa was hurt and very nervous, it was like she decided to be brave. And all of a sudden, the rescuers had a mission. They had to do everything they could to help this courageous elephant get better. They wanted her to be able to go live with a loving elephant herd, but she was too weak to join them yet. The rescuers had to help her heal her wounds first and get her feeling stronger. That meant she had to eat a lot. And the next morning, they realized this isn't going to be easy. Because her mouth was sore, Kanisa didn't want to eat. The rescuers had to find the exact right angle where it wouldn't hurt. But once again, Kanisa trusted her rescuers. She didn't give up. And after a lot of patience, they finally found just the right spot. Soon, Kanisa was starting to feel a little better. So the rescuers opened her gate. They wondered, was she going to be brave enough to come out? She was. In sunshine. This time, she didn't follow anyone's voice. She walked right up to the herd. For now, Kanisa had to stay outside the fence. She was still too weak to join them. So even though she was still the bravest little elephant they'd ever seen, rescuers were worried she'd feel lonely. But that's where Lammy came in. Lammy was pretty special herself. She saw that Kanisa needed a little guidance. So she became her right-hand goat. Instead of following people's voices to get around, she followed Lammy. Except when she left Lammy in the dust. With Lammy by her side, Kanisa started getting even better. <laughs> and then one day, her rescuers saw her playing. What is happening here? That's when they knew Kanisa was going to be okay. And Kanisa knew it too. She was finally ready to join the herd. After a quick dust bath, now, she lives with her big, caring family. The rescuers are glad they still get to visit. And can't help but laugh at the mischievous, sweet elephant. Who, despite everything, decided to just be brave. This little family isn't feeling well. They're so cold. They were by themselves outside and are only one day old. We're gonna warm you up and take you home. Sleepy kittens. Still so cold, huh? Especially you, Bagel. Maybe this will help. We made heating pads out of socks. You look so tiny in there. Some milk will keep you warm. And help you grow a lot bigger. You were so hungry. What's wrong, Bagel? You've stopped drinking from the bottle. Poor Bagel needs to grow. But she's getting smaller. She's so little already. We're gonna help you. This tiny tube makes drinking easier for the smallest kittens. That's it? You're fighting so hard, Bagel. When you grow bigger, we're gonna throw you the biggest party. You look full. The tube must be working. We'll try again tomorrow. There's our little bagel. Looking brighter today. 
but still small. You better learn to use this bottle. It's the only way to get huge. Bagel, you're doing it. Now, maybe you can try kitten food. You made a mess, Bagel. You're not the only one. You're all growing. Guess it's time for that big party. Happy kitten family. So speedy, Bagel. Spud is the bravest. You got up there all by yourself? You did it. Pancake loves being held. And Bagel will climb anywhere. Where do you think you're going? surprise for you. Someone wants to adopt you. You fit perfectly in her arms. And Spud and Pancake have new homes too. We're glad you warmed up and grew up. Especially you, you curious, funny little bagel. There's something about Dream's spirit that inspires Claire to keep rescuing horses. Claire saves horses all the time, like Goliath a huge stallion who was trapped and separated from his family until Claire brought him to her ranch to run free. And Gypsy Rose, a horse Claire actually rescued twice. And this baby. But when Dream came to the sanctuary, Claire had never seen a horse so sick. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Dream was in trouble. She was weak. She could hardly walk. And she didn't weigh enough. Claire would have to work extra hard to help her. But Dream was determined. And Claire could see there was something special about her. She wasn't a horse that would give up so easily. Claire assembled a team of rescuers to help Dream. She called them the Dream Team. Together, they came up with a rescue plan. Every day, Claire went to visit Dream. She fed her special hay, took her on little walks, slowly at first, and stroked her mane. During her visits, Dream would spend a lot of time staring off into the hills. Claire thought Dream was imagining the day she would run strong and free. And soon, that day would come. Before long, Dream was waiting for Claire at the fence every morning. Her appetite was getting bigger. And she could go for longer walks in the sanctuary. But the biggest breakthrough came from an unlikely place, a donkey. Joe was also a rescued animal at Claire's sanctuary. And something about Dream's spirit made Joe want to help too. Joe was on the Dream team. And Dream loved it. With Joe by her side, Dream started to eat even more. And move more too. One day, Claire went to greet her in the morning. And something felt different she could see it in Dream's eyes. Claire brought her out of the stable, stepped back, and was shocked. Dream was running. A few months ago, Dream could barely walk. And now, she was moving like a bolt of lightning. It was the best thing Claire had ever seen. 
Joe seemed happy too. Once Dream got her energy back, you couldn't stop her. And Claire didn't want to. She let Dream run free all over the sanctuary. And the best part was, she could run next to Joe. Dream's spirit couldn't be stopped. Even though she'd been so weak, it had shone through. Now she runs wild at the sanctuary and has a ton of friends and inspires everybody to keep dreaming. Samson's terrible at making friends. He's very serious. Maybe you're wondering, just why is Samson so serious? Well, that's because Samson has a job. And he takes it very seriously. A bit too seriously. Samson doesn't know how to have fun. His mom was worried he'd never want to play like other dogs. Until one day, Samson saw a big cat in a window and got super excited. He was like, hi, hello, what's your name? I'm Samson, I have a job. Samson's mom couldn't believe it. Turns out, Samson did like to play, but only with cats. A few months later, she decided to adopt a baby sister for Samson. She brought her home in a special backpack. Samson thought he knew what was inside, but he wasn't sure until a kitten popped out. A kitten named Cleo. The moment he saw her, Samson completely forgot about how serious he was. had to be gentle, though. Her whole body was as big as his head. But he learned how to play without squashing her. And Cleo? She wasn't scared at all. She loved that Samson was so big. It really came in handy one special day when the whole family was out for a hike. Cleo was enjoying the smells and the sounds of the forest, but after miles of walking, she started getting tired. Her legs are just so little. She couldn't move another step. She was like, help, my poor feet. Samson knew exactly what to do. Hop aboard, little sis. And off they went. Cleo could rest her legs and enjoy the view. And be close to her big, big brother. With Cleo on his back and matching bandanas, they can go almost anywhere. They can even climb mountains. There's nothing these two can't do as long as they're together. A teeny cat and her huge big brother, who's not so serious after all. This big mama cow needs help. She can't walk or even stand by herself. Her calf is really worried. She won't leave her mom's side for even a second. Some people found them on the side of the road and knew right away that they were in trouble. Someone said, hey, there's this cow that's sitting. She looks really, really weak, and she has a calf that can't nurse. Oh, no. That means the calf can't drink her mother's milk. It's a good thing these brave people are here to help, because these two cows are in need of a big rescue. Ah! 
After the rescuers found the mama and the baby cow, they took them to an animal sanctuary. An animal sanctuary is where a bunch of animals that need help, that's where they can go to get help. If some people find them and they're like, oh my goodness, these animals need help. They take them to that sanctuary and then uh, they'd see what's wrong and then they'd fix it and then they'd see if it, they can go back in the wild. Since the calf couldn't drink any milk from her mother, they gave her milk from a big bottle. Yeah, they had to like hold her and she's like, this big. I'd be like me holding a, like a 25,000 bricks. Probably heavy. They also gave her a name, Tofu. And they named her mom Soya. The rescuers had to try and help Soya learn how to stand up by herself again. But they didn't know if she would be able to. The rescuers put her in this big old hammock thing of a jigger dingamo wicker, holding her up so her body weight is held up, but her legs are still having to get more strength in them. Tofu believed in her mom. She stood by her and gave her hope. Within 48 hours, Soya popped right back up. The rescuers were amazed that Soya had gotten better so fast. Tofu was really happy and really hungry. And she was so grateful too. She thanked the rescuers over and over again for helping her mom get better by giving them a big kiss on the cheek. I think that probably feels like a big old dry tongue. Never been kissed by a cow. I have been kissed by a pig. That just feels like a big old muddy tongue. Big old mud mark. They have really raspy tongues that scratch. It's like a giant cat tongue. The rescuers fell in love with Tofu and Soya. They wanted them to stay at the animal sanctuary. Soya also wanted Tofu to make new friends. And that's exactly what Tofu did. Anyone who walks in, she'll run right up to the gate. She wants to say hi. Tofu really likes being petted. Since she first came in, she's been very curious about people. She wants to be around everybody. But she's not just friends with the rescuers. She's friends with all the other animals, too. She's friends with dogs, with sheep, and other cows, of course. She really loves Obi. She's even friends with Dillo the cat. It kind of didn't surprise me because both of them are like super sweet. Tofu likes being friends with everyone. Tofu and her mom have such a good life. Now they have a huge family who all care about them so much. She could not stand and now she can walk around and be a free and happy cat. Er, cow. I don't know why I called her a cat. Remember, if you see an animal in trouble, do not try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. My mom helps me with the dogs I rescue. As soon as the elephants hear Paul's music, they come close. Paul's a piano player who loves spending time with elephants. He first met Chaichana at a sanctuary. Chaichana had worked his whole life carrying heavy logs. He was nervous around people. He didn't trust them. But Paul had an idea. He asked the people at the sanctuary if he could try playing piano for him. But they were worried. Chaichana was so big and really afraid of people. He might hurt Paul. Paul knew they'd have to set it up carefully. It wouldn't be easy. So one day, they brought a piano out to a quiet area. So Chaichana wouldn't be scared. He towered over the piano, but Paul wasn't afraid. And then 
he started to play. All of a sudden, Chichana was calm. He had never heard music before. He couldn't stop listening. Paul brought his piano to Chichana again and again. And every time, Chichana was still listening. Soon, Paul was doing more than just playing music for his new friend. Chichana was starting to trust Paul. He didn't seem nervous around people. That made Paul wonder, could music help other elephants too? And before long, he was playing for all the elephants at the sanctuary. first get to the sanctuary, they're often scared and sad. Paul's music calms them down and helps them express themselves again. Now, when he brings his piano out, the elephants are already there, waiting. It's like they're asking him to play. And he knows their favorite songs. The older elephants like slow, dramatic music. And the babies like... <laughs> so now, when a new elephant comes to the sanctuary, Paul moves his piano out into the jungle, sits down to play, and waits for the ground to shake. Penny will be right by your side all night. Little Penny is not feeling well. She's really cold. And she has no energy. She won't stop shaking. But don't worry, Penny. We're not going anywhere. We're going to make you all better. Sweet Penny, you look so sleepy. You need to get your energy back. And you need to warm up. We'll feed you with this tiny dropper. Your eyes are barely open. But you're eating. Keep fighting, Penny. Hey, you were so hungry. Are you feeling a little better now? Sleepy Penny. That's okay. You've had a big day. You need to get lots of rest to get your energy back. Good night, little one. Morning, Penny. You didn't sleep well, did you? You were up all night. You still aren't feeling very well. Luckily, the vet knows exactly what you need. He takes an x-ray to check your body. You're being so brave in there. It looks like you need to stay at the hospital for now. So the vet can give you special medicine and lots of love. This is all a little scary. But you're a brave kitty, aren't you? Hi, sweet kitty. Seems like somebody's feeling much better today. You're eating from a plate now. That's a full belly. Hello. You really want to walk and won't give up till you do. Hey, that's it! Oops! You're okay. 
You used to be too weak to sit up, but now you're getting stronger and stronger every day. Seems like you might be ready to go home. Penny, is that you? You're so fast and fearless. Your sister is so much bigger, but she's no match for you. Even though you're still a kitten, you're as brave as a big cat. You have so much energy and need big plates of food now. You're growing so much. You're so curious, so feisty. And oops, but that's why everyone loves you. We're so glad you're you, Penny. And that you're feeling all better. Hello, kids. Help the kittens find the subscribe button.